In an effort to improve the strength, reliability, and smoothness of North Carolina's roadways, engineers are designing new composite mixtures for concrete highway construction. Researchers from the William States Lee College of Engineering are testing the mechanical properties of these materials for the North Carolina Department of Transportation to determine how well they're performing now and how well they will perform in the future. Here in the Department of Engineering, Technology and Construction Management at UNC Charlotte, we have been doing a lot of ongoing research for North Carolina Department of Transportation in a number of focus areas. My focus area is on concrete materials, and specifically I've been doing a lot of work with concrete bridges and pavements here in the state. Uh, the project we're going to talk about is actually taking a look at concrete pavements associated with the I-485, I-85 interchange project, and the I-85 widening projects. And what we're doing for NCDOT is we're actually testing concrete that they remove from these completed pavement projects. And we are performing laboratory testing to evaluate the concrete and determine the coefficient of thermal expansion of the material used for these pavements. What the coefficient of thermal expansion is, um, and every material has one, is for a given temperature change, how much this shrinks or expands. Most people are familiar with that from um, the reason that we put joints in our sidewalks and, and in other places. You need to account for that expansion based on whether things are getting hotter or colder. Um, in pavements, um, a material such as this has a coefficient of thermal expansion on the order of five micro inches per inch per degree Fahrenheit, which really is a small amount and very hard to measure. But when you have miles and miles of concrete pavement, it's a significant amount of movement that goes on as the pavement cycles through night and day and seasonal temperature changes. If you have a very high amount of movement due to temperature, you can end up with premature joint failure, you can end up with problematic cracking that's earlier than expected, um, and all sorts of other deterioration that is, is not what you'd like to see. What we're doing as part of this work is determining some values for NCDOT to use for design of future pavements. And this value should give them results that give us more economical, more long-lasting pavements as they construct these types of pavements in the future. What we do with that data is we, our pavement design engineers, use it in the pavement analysis software we have. So it's a very significant factor for the expansion and contraction of concrete pavements so it helps us in our design process. Our department's been very fortunate to have the opportunity to do a lot of research for NCDOT, and what this research does is it provides um, projects for our master's students in our construction management and facilities management program here in the Department of Engineering, Technology, and Construction Management to uh, pursue their graduate degrees. In my studies here at UNC Charlotte, I have uh, been fortunate enough to work with Dr. Cavallini. We have received several research grants through the NCDOT uh, in determining mechanical and thermal properties of concrete uh, batched around the area. So our first step in once we receive our test specimens from NCDOT will be to cut our specimens down to the appropriate length. Uh, for this test, we're cutting them down to seven inches, plus or minus 0.1 inch. We will submerge them in water for a period of 24 hours to 48 hours. We will then load them into our fixture. Uh, I input a few key parameters into the program, mainly the location of the core, the core ID, and its measured length. We will then submerge the fixture into our water bath. The water bath is a pretty neat thing. It, can, it ranges from 50 degrees to 120 degrees on a Fahrenheit reading and will record the measured length change of that test specimen over that varied temperature range. It is important that it goes over three cycles. It goes up to the max and down to the minimum over three cycles so we get an accurate and true reading of the coefficient of thermal expansion. So our results uh, vary depending on the aggregate type and the mixture proportions, but in general we are receiving results uh, from five to seven micro inches per inch per degree Fahrenheit, which is very typical for Portland cement concrete mixtures nationally as well as regionally. Now we have CT values from actual concrete that's being placed with aggregate in North Carolina versus using average values that we have from across the nation. 
we have a mixed design specific values, so it, it really helps us in our uh, design process. We do a lot of research on asphalt pavements, and we do a lot of research on the aggregate side also, but uh, this helped open the door to doing more concrete related research. And so we're working on things like the CTE values on a research project to go statewide to look at mixed designs with different aggregates all across the state. And then taking those mixed designs, creating our own cores and getting CT values for the whole state. So this precedent we've started just in the local Charlotte area will now be expanded statewide. We do rely on our research uh, partners. We need that outsourcing and that uh, partnership to get things done and get these values. So we really, we really appreciate all that. This has been a great experience for us here, and we hope to continue to do work for NCDOT, getting them the information they need to build better infrastructure and more sustainable infrastructure here in North Carolina. Thank you.